And so the Asian Cup has an absolutely new winner. Hello and welcome my soccer universe for this probably final video on the Asian Cup uh, as the final was played this Friday afternoon Central Europe time morning I think in America and yeah um, I was wondering what jersey shall I wear um, don't have anything really maroon as Qatar Roma doesn't seem right at the moment, that would be the closest thing. I have a hockey jersey that uh, you've seen, the Avalanche jersey has maroon sleeves, but I decided to go with this college football shirt jersey from the University of South Carolina where I went to, which probably is the closest things I can have to a Qatar, Qatar jersey. It's Qatar, not Qatar, Qatar. I have to get used to that because in German we, still, we all say Qatar and I think most um, in the English-speaking world also would say that. Yeah, I don't want to say I called it, but after the um, semi-final I said, do we have to call Qatar now favorites to win it all? Well, I still thought that Japan are the better side and they were not, Japan surely was not the best side at the tournament. Um, I'm not even sure that Qatar was. But they were impressive, no doubt about that, a young and an impressive team. Today's game, um, I think the run of the game went in their favor. Um, when you look at statistics, when you read, when you, uh, I'm not sure if you, if you watch it from, if you can say from highlights, although what I saw also had a little bit of feeling. Japan is the better team, of course, had the majority of possession. I also find it interesting that Qatar uh, played in their white jerseys, but yeah, again, uh, the maroon ones are too dark and wouldn't contrast well with the uh, blue Japan jerseys. So yeah, the one jersey of the, of a biggish team that I did not really cover in my uh, Asian Cup jersey review because at the time I made them, they have not played in this. Uh, we had to wait until the quarterfinals that we saw them. Yeah, they looked alright. Nothing really fancy. I think. I would give it the same rating as the home jersey, which was a six or seven star, something like that. Um, fine looking, but nothing extraordinarily. Um, jersey wise, I think the Asian Cup, you got it. Um, there was nothing really too um, offensive in there, but it was mostly boring jerseys, especially for in the Arab world, and I don't quite understand it. But let's go back to the game. So um, Japan had, of course, majority of possession, tried to actually do something, uh, had the first chance, I think fourth or sixth minute, but uh, missed. Kozaku, I think it was. And then the game falls Qatar's way with um, Ali Almoe scoring potentially the goal of the tournament, although when you look at it, it was really a slow motion goal. Cross in, he just stops it with his chest, back to the goal. Um, and makes a bicycle kick in the low corner. Bicycle kick goals are always cool, but that one seemed a relatively easy to defend because he had so much time. I mean, there was a defender there, but there's nothing happening. Uh, but yeah, he scores his, I think it was the ninth goal, so new record, although, you know, now they're playing seven games and not six games, so I'm not sure if this record should stand or be the hail as such a huge record. But yeah, 1-0. A uh, few minutes later, uh, it was um, Abdulaziz Hatem, 27th, who made the second goal uh, with a, a shot out of um, quite some distance uh, in the uh, top corner. And Qatar at that moment looked very, 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 very safe. Um, they even had chances to make it two or three, but you know, um, I think that, that would have been a little bit too much. The second half, Japan comes out storming, um, trying to really turn this game around. And you would think that they have enough experience that they would be able to do that. And yeah. Uh, found several chances. Uh, Muto missed a big one with a header. And finally Minamino, Minamino uh, playing for Salzburg actually, um, uh, makes the breakthrough. The first goal to Qatar, I still say it wrong, Qatar, 
uh, concedes in the course of the tournament. So um, maybe you could say they were worthy finalists because they were the only ones who scored on Qatar. Um, I think there are other things. I mean, Japan is a really, really hard to beat team. And, you know, what they did uh, to Iran uh, is still is still impressive, even though it didn't work out in the end. So with 1-2, 20 minutes, I mean, all Japan needs is an equalizer, uh, but they just cannot get it. And what's worse is my favorite type of penalty um, is being given uh, for Qatar. Um, where there was a handball, you know, it falls more on his hand than it is really uh, an intentional handball. But whenever the ball touches the hand in the box, whether it's voluntary or involuntary, they are giving penalties these days. Uh, I honestly really do not like that. If someone handles the ball on purpose, yes, 100%. But where shall he put this hand? I mean, he's jumping, trying to jump with. I don't know. We will see very weird uh, movements uh, very soon in soccer. Um, if you watch American football and you see what wide receivers, uh, where they are, the rules are constantly changing, but what body contortions they make to stay within the rules, I can see for far see something um, uh, happening for. Um, soccer as well that you know we will see very weird jumps and moves and, and and whatever this penalty was given yes it is covered by the rules uh, but I honestly think a little bit more we have this German uh, word fingerspitzengefühl which is fingertip feeling which means you know have a feeling for the C C C C situation judge wisely that's missing with that rule and I personally don't like it. But yeah, the penalty is given. And it was Afif who scores it. He has had 10 assists in this tournament or something like that. And now he has a goal, a goal too. And Qatar wins the first Asian Cup on enemy soil, if you will. There is not a war, but the uh, relations between Qatar and the rest of the Arabian Peninsula is everything but good uh, to the point that there were no fans there there were not that many Japanese fans there either and so it was basically a home crowd a host crowd uh, watching that game which is also weird and you know they wanted everyone but Qatar winning the tournament now going back uh, to what I said earlier it is that Qatar team is very young all products of the Aspire Academy. Uh, yes, there have been some qualms about it because seemingly you need to live five years continuously in the country and just a few hours ahead of the game it was decided that Qatar can play this game. This would have been a major disaster. I think there was no other way that this, than playing this game, to be honest. I don't think you could have just said, okay, we're going to have now um, the Emirates play in the final just because we have to uh, kick out Qatar. I think this would have been an absolute disaster. So uh, to me, it was clear, even when I read about this yesterday, uh, where this protest is going. But yeah, the Youth Academy there is working well. And, you know, they have their um, European basis where they can send players. I mean, uh, Barcelona had a little bit. I know that Lusk had for a short while. That's where Ali Almoes uh, came uh, to Austria for half a season before moving to Spain. They usually play third division and so on. You know, it's nothing big, but they, the academy is seemingly working. Now, do I think that Qatar was the best team at the Asian Cup? Well, the statistics look impressive. I give it to them. They eliminated South Korea. They uh, eliminated Japan. Uh, they beat Saudi Arabia. So, I mean, the big boys they beat, uh, for sure. But the win against South Korea especially was more down to luck than uh, really uh, dominating South Korea. So I would still say that the Koreans, even the Japanese, that were maybe with the run of play a little bit unlucky today. 
uh, I will still see them as the cream of the crop in Asia. Um, of course, Iran, although I'm be curious to see uh, what will happen now that Carlos Garish is uh, gone. You hear very big names being uh, presented to the by the Irani Federation, but with what money are they going to pay those? So that's going to be interesting. I would still would they say that those three are probably the cream of the crop, but Qatar is on the way up, that's for sure. Uh, and it would be more impressive that a small country like, a country like Qatar can pull this off. Yes, they have all the resources. Yes, they have been um, naturalizing a lot of players and even uh, major players this time around came from Sudan. But, you know, Sudan is not exactly the world power in soccer. So um, there is, you got to give them some credit. That's for sure, and they probably now cracked into the, these top Asian teams. So that you would say, having them host the World Cup, they have a squad that is at least worthy enough. They will not be overran, and for that reason, I guess this result is good. Uh, I don't want to go too much into political component, but you know, this was a total, in that sense a total outsider story because they couldn't get any support. This was the ultimate away team. Um, but yeah, they now play at the Copa America. Then we will even know even more. You know, the first time we heard about them was, I think, in November when they played Switzerland, Swiss B team and beat Switzerland. Uh, now they win the Asian Cup. Now let's see how they will do at the Copa America. And then we can make a final judgment on Qatar and how they will perform. As for Japan, yeah, I'm a little bit sad that they didn't win this one. Um, I didn't have Japan, you know, they are, of course, were in the top group of nations that win, but I thought that Iran and South Korea are a little bit stronger. But uh, Japan would have been my third pick uh, to win it. And so, yeah. Uh, um, they are among my favorite teams in Asia. I still don't have a Japan jersey, uh, but yeah, would have loved to see them win. Uh, there's a nation that I would have loved to see more win, but of course we know that Australia... I, I said it from the beginning, I never had the feeling that Australia will do anything. Okay. Asian Cup 2019 is in the books. Uh, I have always I followed it quite closely, but I have not seen anything live. Um, I got the feeling, you know, a lot of free kick goals, um, mostly forgettable action in a way. Uh, I'm sorry to say, but most of the goals, even in a semi-final or quarter-final, there were goals in there that you don't see at such a stage in other tournaments. Maybe occasionally, but not at this mass. I mean, I just look at the 1-0 uh, in both semifinals. Those are rookie mistakes. Uh, and this doesn't shine, unfortunately, a good light on uh, the state of Asian soccer. 24 teams seems a little bit too much, but I have to say that uh, smaller teams did uh, do well. Did do kind of okay -ish if you discount the really, really, really small ones, but I think a 16 tournament probably would be better. Um, it was at the beginning exciting because there were quite some upsets, uh, but then it fell, you know, until it came to the knockout round when the Qatar and Vietnam pulled a little bit uh, minor upsets. Uh, there was again some, some, some excitement. I found it a better tournament than the one four years ago in Australia. Although that one featured a, at least a good, a great final, but up until that point, that tournament was kind of a so and so. Uh, so yeah, I'm curious to see. I, I will still follow this tournament, and yeah. Now, when it comes to international soccer, we have Nations League come coming up, and we have, of course uh, three big tournaments in the summer: uh, the Copa America, we have the uh, FA Cup of Nations. I think there's even a Gold Cup coming pretty sure about that so there are three and then of course the women's world cup so gonna try to stay on top of all these again let me know what you thought about the asian cup what you thought about the final what you think about qatar uh drop me a comment below 
I'd be very happy to hear from you. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.